This is important information for all the different parts of a, of a cooperative to know. And, and in terms of the stages of information, it's important to know what you have to do and the consequences of what, what happens if you don't. And that's sort of the legal framework piece. But it's also a good idea to know what, what is a good idea to do. And uh, this can, is often based on the experiences of other cooperatives in your sector or uh, other cooperatives in, in general, and also experience that you've had either in, in other cooperatives or other forms of business. And this is sort of what we call the best practices. And also, you know, it's important to note that uh, what works for one co-op may not work for another. And uh, to some extent, you need to know what's going to work for your cooperative within that framework of the absolutely have to do things, the legal things, and the best practices. And uh, so this is sort of the piece where co-ops are unique like snowflakes. So although there are some best practices, uh, there, may, there is always a, an exception. And so uh, that's sort of the, the framework that we'll be approaching. So the presentation is going to spend the majority of the time on the legal, um, but we are going to include some guiding principle information. But please don't be afraid to ask questions that are more around best practices. So you know, don't worry so much if you have a question that isn't so much around what do we absolutely have to do under the law? If you've got questions around, you know, should we be doing this or not, please feel free to ask those types of questions as well. Um, so let's, uh, this is the, the diagram that we looked at last week, and this is your basic cooperative structure. It wasn't in the right place last week, but uh, I think it's in the right place here. Um, so as you can see, your basic co-op structure, uh, and there are some exceptions which I'll, I'll go through in a minute, but your basic cooperative structure is that you have your membership, which is responsible for electing uh, the board of directors from within itself. And uh, in Ontario, the board of directors can only be made up of members of the cooperative. You can't have any outside directors. And that function, you know, and along with uh, other uh, democratic voting um, motions that the membership may carry out and what the board does in and around that is considered sort of the democratic functioning side of the cooperative. Uh, if you look at the lower half of the diagram, the board of directors um, will hire the senior staff person of the cooperative, and then that senior staff person will hire additional management. And uh, this you know, certainly holds for larger cooperatives where there are multiple levels of staff. Some smaller cooperatives don't have staff or only have one staff person, and then that, if that's the case, uh, the board um, just hires that one person or in many cases takes on some of that work themselves. And so the staff people are responsible for, uh, you know, under the oversight of the board of directors for the business portion of the co-op or the business side of the cooperative. But it's important to note that although there are these two sides, the democratic side and the business side, they do work together in this one entity. Uh, and so the business side of the cooperative feeds the, the ultimate purpose of the cooperative in that the business to, to, to some extent or another, either directly or indirectly, meets the needs of the members. And in some cases, that's very direct in the sense that, uh, for example, in a housing or a daycare cooperative, the purpose of the cooperative is to provide those services to the members, and so the business of the cooperative is providing those services to members. In other cases, the business is done with those outside of the membership, uh, say the general public, uh, but the benefits still accrue to the membership. And so examples of this would be like a uh, producer co-op, like a, a dairy cooperative like Organic Meadow or Gay Lee, where um, the business side of the function is around bringing products to market and processing it, and then those dollars go back to the members as well as other uh, ancillary services. So as you can see, it, it is um, a bit of a circle, but there are sort of discrete functions within that that are important to, to know about because the democratic and the business side do have to work together to make a, a co-op work successfully. So let's take a look at each of these pieces in turn. So let's look at the membership first. And so uh, you should be looking at a picture now with a, a nice red circle around the membership. And I didn't pick red for any other reason other than it was easy to see. Um, so. Uh, the membership is, is the key component to the cooperative. Uh, co-op doesn't exist without the members. The co-op is organized to meet a member need, and so without the members, there is no organization. So uh, they have the final and ultimate say in a number of key decisions that happen within the cooperative, and uh, probably one of the most important ongoing functions that they participate in is the election of directors to carry out the governance function because members don't necessarily uh, make 
decisions about the ongoing business and management of the co-op, they do the, the board does that on their behalf. So one of the most important things they can do is elect people to the board to carry out that function. Um, and uh, so it's important to note that you know the members have the right to vote on all of these important issues, and we'll go over what they are uh, momentarily. But uh, there's also responsibility that comes along with that in that um, it's not enough to simply have the rights to vote. It's important that uh, the, the members exercise those, ro those uh, rights and that they take responsibility to exercise those rights. And this is one of the ongoing challenges with cooperatives is how do you keep the members engaged enough to be exercising those democratic rights to make the democratic functioning side of the cooperative work well. Um, so let's move on to the bottom side of the, um, the co-op, which is uh, and a, not, not the bottom in the sense that they're not important, but the managers. So um, management, for the most part, uh, carries out the business functions of the cooperative, and they do that on an operational sort of basis. They serve the needs of the members, but they report through the senior staff person to the board of directors. So they don't necessarily report directly to the membership, although in many cases, there's, uh, in cooperative senior staff will make reports to the membership at the annual meeting. Technically, the reporting uh, relationship is to the board of directors. Um, and it's important to note that not all co-ops, as I mentioned, have employees. Very small or startup cooperatives may not have employees yet, or very small cooperatives may only ever have one employee. And if that's the case, the business functions of the cooperative are often carried out by the board of directors. Uh, and it's also important to note that the structure for this looks a bit different if you're talking about a worker cooperative. And as we discussed last week, and as some of you may already know on the phone, worker cooperatives' primary uh, responsibility or primary function is to provide employment to its membership. And so if that's the case, and you're talking about a worker cooperative, those members at the top are also the employees that you would see uh, at the bottom of that diagram. So there is a dual role played by the members in that sort of situation, which, you know, as you might imagine, makes that relationship potentially quite a bit more complex than it might uh, exist in other cooperatives where the management function is separated from the membership uh, quite, uh, quite clearly. So uh, th those are sort of the exceptions around management that I did want to mention. And so certainly last but not least, let's take a look at the, the directors who occupy this central part of the diagram. And they act very much as a bridge between the democratic functioning and the business functioning of the cooperative. So the board's responsibility is to govern and manage the day-to-day -day business and affairs of the cooperative. And we'll talk about what specifically that means uh, once we get through these diagrams. They are elected from within the membership through a democratic process, and they are um, they represent the, the members' interests as a result. Directors have additional liability and responsibilities that members do not have, uh, and so this is important. And we'll talk about what the ramifications are and what specifically those are. And one of their primary visions, from sort of the 35,000 foot level or from the big picture level is that um, the board maintains the mission and vision and strategy of the cooperative for the long term on behalf of the members. So the members have come together uh, to create this cooperative to meet their needs, and the board sort of acts as the steward of, of, those, of that vision uh, that brought the original members together and keeps the cooperative moving forward towards those long-term goals. And so there's a very strong strategic function that the board fulfills in a cooperative. From the business side, um, the, the directors also uh, have a very strong role to play, uh, primarily from a human resources perspective, overseeing the senior employee, and they provide strategic directions for the business side of the cooperative, which the staff then operationalize and put into effect. So board says, you know, this is, this is the strategy of how we're going to get where we need to go, and then the staff turns around and says, okay, and this is our plan to make that happen. Uh, this is not necessarily something that happens right away with a cooperative uh, that's starting up. Uh, certainly this is something where, uh, you know, uh, you certainly see it in, in larger cooperatives where there's a strong delineation between staff, board, and membership. But this can take a while to get to uh, a relationship where all of these parts are working together, which sort of leads into this last summary slide around how do all three of these parts work together. Uh, and the key to the system, the system working is that everybody needs to understand what their roles and responsibilities are. Members need to uh, know and understand what decisions they're supposed to be making on behalf of the cooperative and what their rights are. The board needs to understand 
this role where they act as the bridge between the democratic functioning and the business uh, side of the cooperative and what that means. Uh, and the managers, uh, management needs to understand the role of how to carry this out on behalf of the members and how their activities feed the membership needs. And so communication is critical uh, and engagement in this structure and the willingness to accept the responsibility that comes with those roles is also critical to long-term success. So this is where, um, for those of you that have been in the movement for a while, this whole idea of being able to, to clearly state who are your members, what do they get out of a cooperative, what is the role of staff, how does the board move all this forward, being able to, to talk about that and be engaged in the structure and really understand what it means to be part of a cooperative leads to some of its long-term success. Uh, this is not necessarily the same as any other type of business from that perspective.